Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will continue our discussion on operations on vectors and we will talk about a norm of a vector. So we will start with a very basic definition of norm and then we will build sequentially. Let's start looking at the concept of norm. Norm is a measure of distance of a vector from the origin. We say norm of a vector is given by quantity that measures distance of a vector from the origin. It quantifies the strength of a vector. How do we measure the distance of a scalar from the origin? Say we have a scalar alpha that belongs to R. How do we measure distance of this alpha from origin? It is simply given by the absolute value of alpha. Right. So, this is the distance of alpha from the origin. If the alpha is positive or negative, absolute value would be always positive. What about distance of a vector from the origin? So, we start with R2. Say we are in R2 and we take a point in R2, a vector in R2. Say, let's say we take A and on x1 axis coordinate is a1 on x2 axis its coordinate is a2 so what's the distance of a vector from the origin so we don't know, know that the distance is given by a1 square plus a2 square square root or we call it 1 by 2 this is in fact a definition of a norm and this is we denote norm by these two vertical lines on either side of this vector a so a norm of a vector gives you the distance of a vector from the origin we can extend this concept to rn say we are in rn in rn for a vector say b belongs to rn its norm is given by b1 square plus b2 square plus bn square and we take square root 1 over 2 so this is the definition of a norm this is in fact a special type of norm and in some textbooks we write the subscript the definition so we add this two here or we add this two here so these two represents these two in the definition of the norm and we will see very shortly that in fact we can use some other number greater than or equal to one instead of these two and if you change this number you will get a different definition of norm but nevertheless it would be a norm it would quantify the distance of a vector from the origin mm -hmm. this definition of norm is called euclidean norm or two norm so we write it as euclidean norm or also called two norm so because we are measuring euclidean distance here and the two here indicates uh, this this quantity here 2 power b to the power 2 and also we have this 2 this 2 here so we can generalize this concept uh, to define p norm for any p greater than or equal to 1 so let me define what we mean by p norm so if we take any p greater than or equal to 1 take p greater than 1 and we take a vector say a that belongs to rn so the p norm for vector a we use same notation these two vertical lines but we add a subscript p here and the definition is given by so a1 absolute value to the power p plus a2 p plus plus a n absolute power p and this sum is just the power 1 over p 
if I use p is equal to 2 I recover equilibrium norm or 2 norm for any other p greater than or equal to 1 so this this quantity quantifies the distance of a vector from the origin but for different definitions of p you will get a different notion of the distance uh, to see it uh, or to explain this further let's again revisit r2 right if i ask you to draw all the points on this plane for which Euclidean norm is equal to 1 right? say say we want to find all the points B on this two-dimensional plane let's say x1 x2 for which Euclidean norm or 2 norm is equal to 1 so here are those points so in fact those points are given by at a distance 1 and what you get is this circle right? this circle at a distance of radius 1 from the origin right? so any point on this circle has a distance has Euclidean norm of 1 okay so if I ask you to denote all the points to find all the points on this R2 plane for which one norm is equal to one and if you use definition what you get is b1 absolute plus b2 absolute is equal to one so in fact all of these points on this r2 plane are given by this diamond shape so the straight line the straight line the straight line the straight line okay. and uh, so this is this is for green diamond is for p is equal to 1 I have a circle for p is equal to 2 okay. say if you choose p is equal to infinity right and that is called infinite norm uh, let me also define that infinite norm because uh, that is used very frequently in machine learning and data science right so for a vector a its infinity norm which is a subscript infinity that is given by simply maximum absolute value of a vector a1 a1 absolute a2 absolute and an absolute and on this R2 plane, the infinity norm is given by these points. So all of these points uh, on this black square have infinity norm is equal to 1. You pick any point, say if you, if you pick uh, this point here, so the infinity norm is equal to 1. If you pick a point here, the infinity norm is equal to 1. So this is green is p is equal to 1, red is p is equal to 2, and this black square is p is equal to infinity. So all of these points are, sorry, b infinity is equal to 1. All of these green points have 1 norm is equal to 1, and all of these red points uh, have Euclidean norm is equal to 1. Let me illustrate this uh, with the help of an example as well. So, say we take a vector A, say we take in R5, and we take entries as say 5, minus 3, minus 7, for convenience, we take 4 and we take 1. And if we want to compute equilibrium norm of this, that is given by should very quickly. So 25 plus 9 plus 49 plus 16 plus 1. And uh, this should square root. This should sum to uh, 
100 and take a square root and what you get is 10 and if I want to compute one norm of this so one norm of the vector is simply given by the sum of the absolute values and that is given by 5 plus 3 plus 7 plus 4 plus 1 and that is given by uh, I think it should be 20 and what about infinity norm infinity norm is given by the maximum absolute value of the vector a so vector a has 5 3 7 4 and 1 so the maximum of 5 3 7 4 1 and then we're given by 7 so, so this, this is just an example what you can observe here is that one norm is greater than two norm and two norm is greater than infinity norm this is in fact due to mathematical relationship between uh, p norm so we can say for a vector a so its p norm is greater than or equal to say uh, q norm so when p is what should be the relationship between p and q so so what is the observation here so one norm is greater than two norm two norm is greater than or equal to in fact infinity norm so so what we observe here that p should be less than or equal to q right so in fact we can prove this mathematically uh, let's move on and talk about more uh, general definition of norm so if we see norm so norm is a function that maps from r into r right so so far we have defined norm as a function that maps from r n to r so it takes a vector and returns a non-negative scalar so in fact any function that satisfies some of the properties uh, we say the function is norm and there are four properties uh, uh, if a function satisfies those four properties we say a function is norm so let me write down these four properties the, the very basic property is non-negativity That simply means that we say a function, a norm function, always greater than or equal to zero. Right. Another property is, and that is definiteness. That means the norm of any vector a is equal to zero if and only if that vector is zero. So this so this implies. A is equal to zero right and then another one we have that is called homogeneity or in fact it is non-negative homogeneity that if you scale a vector by a scalar the norm also gets scaled that simply means norm of alpha a is same as alpha absolute uh, norm of this is non-negative homogeneity and the fourth one is uh, what we call triangle triangular effect, triangle inequality that says that norm of a sum of two vectors is less than or equal to sum of norms of these vectors so if any function satisfies these four properties we say uh, that function represents a norm right so we conclude this discussion uh, on norm uh, definition of norm 
so in this course uh, we will only stick to definition of Euclidean norm so whenever we talk about these two brackets and we pass a vector this will always mean two norm or Euclidean norm in fact Euclidean norm is so widely used that if there is no subscript here along the definition of norm we say this is this is norm 2 so we have talked about uh, the definition of norm what do we mean by Euclidean norm and then we talked about uh, what do we mean by P norm and we also looked at one example which analyzed definition of norm uh, let's also quickly talk about uh, the relationship between norm and uh, the concepts which we have studied earlier uh, for example inner product right so norm is related to inner product that norm of vector a square is a1 square plus a2 square plus an square and we have seen this before this is in fact inner product of vector with itself sum of squares right so we have talked about this uh, in our previous module and furthermore uh, we also talk about uh, the definition of rms value so rms value of a vector is simply given by norm divided by square root of the dimension of the vector so what is rms value so rms stands for root mean square right so what we want so we want to square we want to take a mean and then we take a square root right that simply means so rms value is given by a1 square plus a2 square plus an square so we have square and then we want to take a mean so we want to divide it by n and then we want to take a square root this is the rms value right but we can also define just by using norm and we know that the numerator with the power is norm so norm of vector a divided by square root of n this is the rms value and uh I think before we close discussion let's also talk about uh, unit vector right. so we talked about unit vector so every unit vector has a norm is equal to one and in fact any vector uh, can be made unit norm by dividing the vector with its uh, with its norm right for example if you have vector a and uh, if i divide if i have a new vector b and that is a divided by the norm of a and what we know that uh, so now b is a vector with unit norm or b is unit normed vector so that was all about norm we stop here and we will continue in the next module thank you very much